weekend news. We talked the Super Mario trailer. Smash World Tour gets canceled. Nintendo apologizes for Pokemon. And a new amnesia game. Extra, extra, hear all about it. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast where you decide which one of us is the main character. That's cool. I'm I'm the Dean of Games, the Dean Slater on all platforms uh you know you want to know about. Like uh, I'm on Hive, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Twitch, all of that. Uh the Dean Slater. Pretty easy to remember. Um and joining me today is from Twitch's graveyard, Gavin. Hi, I'm the main character. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> to be fair, uh, Landon got stuck on one of uh, one of the mountains in our area, so he's uh, they're they're sending helicopters to try to see if they can find him on the mountain. But there's only so high helicopters can go, you know. He's going through his training arc. Yeah, he's got to learn. He's got to learn how to climb out of those wells. So yeah, he was. He was standing there. He was standing there not long ago, and he's like, "Man, I can't, I can't track any of their movements at all." Oh my god, I'm a side character, and and now he's trying to work to not be a side character. No, he was sitting there like, "Man, I'm tired of falling in these wells, not being able to climb climb out. I'm gonna go climb a mountain so I can learn how to climb." And now he's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, uneventful. Did I work on Thanksgiving? Uh, no, I was sick. No, you did not work Thanksgiving. No, I was sick. I remember because I was going to go to uh, my buddy Mills' house for Thanksgiving, but I was too sick to go. Yeah, or I wasn't like too sick to go, but I was still feeling kind of sick. And I told him I was like, I'd want to go, and I could, but like I didn't want to get any of his family sick because like I was ugh, dead to the world. Yeah, you were there. You saw it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was there. I I almost wish I had a less eventful Thanksgiving. I went to like three different Thanksgiving dinners. I saw them. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, I barely played anything. So uh, for those of you who uh, are Patreon uh, subscribers, you'll know our back pages. It's our post show where we talk where, about what we've been playing. Uh, did not play a whole lot uh, Thanksgiving week. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, I was asleep like that whole week. I was messed up on Nyquil. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was yeah. the only time I was awake was to use the bathroom and drink more Nyquil. Yeah. That was then though, and this is now, and this is extra extra your weekly gaming news podcast covering the news leading up to Sunday, December. Well, it's supposed to be December fourth, but uh. <laughs> We're recording this on December 5th. And if you like us, you can go to patreon.com slash the briefing room. Let's get to some news. Yeah, you take a week, two week break from uh, podcasting and everything goes to shit. <laughs> so many issues trying to get this uh, week recorded. Everybody's but, getting sick or other things are happening. It's just, it's, it's been a bad couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, you know what's good? The Super Mario trailer. Yes, yes, it was. So, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, um, 
Nintendo put out a trailer, uh, a second trailer for Super, uh, the Super Mario Bros. movie, um, which I will say they do like their little uh, introduction for their direct. Um, and uh, it was, um, they, they were talking, oh my God. I did not want that. Okay, there we go. Uh, they were talking about Anya Taylor Joy, which I always thought her name was Anya. A N Y A. I've always thought was Anya, but they're like Anya, 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 and it's not like uh, that is a uh, you know that's not how Japanese would pronounce it either. Japanese would also pronounce it Anya, so. Uh, the fact that they were going out of their way to say Anya, I apologize, Anya, for that I uh, have been mispronouncing your name all this time. We're um, Americans. Yeah. We're dumb. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I will definitely be working on that. But then she came on screen and she talked a little bit about her role. And then they had uh, Seth Rogen come and talk about playing Donkey Kong. <laughs> And he is as passionate as Jack Black was about the role. Um, but yeah. Uh, so they, they went through all that. Um, sorry, I'm kind of scrubbing through what, uh, what all they did. Uh, Yeah, so it shows Mario coming out uh, of a tunnel to fight Donkey Kong and just getting his shit beat in, which is phenomenal. Love that. Uh, also, tons of tons of um, uh, Easter eggs. You have uh, a bunch of uh, people from the Kong Kingdom that we know that are. Um, that are in the background that we haven't seen since like the N64 days. Um, it appears they reworked Cranky Kong to be like a, uh, like a chieftain of their tribe or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, Toad and Peach are just watching and uh, just shocked that he was getting his ass beat that much. <laughs> uh, Luigi has been captured. Um, by Bowser, and there was a great line about uh, their matching clothes and everything. Um, Charlie Day, phenomenal, phenomenal Luigi. Uh, they um, shows that they actually are not from the Mushroom Kingdom. They're from actually from Brooklyn, which I like. There's been arguments whether it's a isekai or a um or more of a uh alice in wonderland situation which to me i think both those are basically one and the same i don't i don't know what the difference between those two things are um uh, peach is talking about all of the uh about the danger of bowser uh and everything it shows a map, which you can see the different kingdoms. Uh, you have the kingdom Bowser's from, uh, and he's leaving the Penguin Kingdom, which is now up in flames. There's the Kong Kingdom. There's a uh, desert. There's Yoshi's Island. And then there's an island that's an N64 controller, which I think is really cool. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, each is a... She's a baddie in this. Shows her in her uh, motorcycle outfit, and she basically kicks a halberd into her arms, just spins it around like it's nothing. And there's also a moment with a fire flower, which is really cool. Uh, 
uh, it shows Mario Kart, and then also uh, it shows like that they're going to be doing a uh, like a training montage with the original Mario's, you know, platforms and stuff, which is cool. But yeah, uh, how did you feel about the trailer? Um, I didn't notice all the things that you did, but I will say that uh walk that Peach did, which then kicked the halberd and kept walking like that was clean. And oh, I did yeah. notice, I did notice the uh, fire flower situation. I thought that was yeah. super cool because I didn't yeah, know that her, was going to be part of it. Yeah, where her dress even changes too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, there's like, uh. People have been like scrubbing through and finding a bunch of Easter eggs. Like, there's already tons of Easter egg videos out there for you to watch. <laughs> um, yeah, and you even see a herd of Yoshis uh, in there. Like, it's just for a half second, but you can see like a herd of Yoshis run, and then like a pink one stops and looks. Uh, <laughs> so we will be seeing a. Uh, we will be seeing Yoshi's in this movie as well. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, it's just so cool. The Mario Kart, the uh, the um, the training sequence looks like it's going to be like a fun little moment and a uh, uh, callback to the original. You know, a lot of people, I saw a lot of people um, talking about how the only good actor, the only person that has any good acting in this is Jack Black. And don't get me wrong, I love Jack Black as Bowser. Sorry. But Charlie Charlie Day was phenomenal Luigi from that little bit we saw of Luigi. Yeah. And Peach uh, may not have as high-pitched of a voice, but she's she's rocking her uh her part from the what I mean obviously we've just seen the trailers. It's not like we've seen the whole movie. But just based on what I've seen, I've I think they're doing great. Um I put out a post on uh Twitter because I was seeing all this discourse of you know who actually had a good performance and who didn't, you know. And I said voice acting does not mean changing your voice. Voice acting is just acting. The only difference between regular acting and voice acting is voice acting, you need to provide a little bit more energy than in regular acting because animation naturally has higher energy than a live action project. Right. And they were all bringing energy. There was, it, it, it was good. Again, I mean, we just saw short snippets. Maybe they showed us the good stuff. It's all downhill from here. Who knows? <laughs> right. <laughs> but from what we have seen, I think outside of Chris Pratt, they all are doing really well. He is definitely low energy for this project. And I still can't get over when he, is, when he said Koopa as if it was a slur. <laughs> smashing Koopas <laughs> um, but yeah my my big concern and you know I'm sure it'll be fine uh, is how do they implement all of this stuff that they showed in 84 minutes because that's how long this movie is it's 84 minutes so that's an hour and 20 minutes. How do they how do they make that work? Uh, that that's my one concern, but uh that's not something we will have an answer to to until the movie comes out. Right. Um so we talked about something that Nintendo is doing right, which means them doing something wrong is right around the corner. Uh, so let's talk about Smash World Tour. Um, this uh, this story is going to involve me reading a lot of statements, so please bear in, uh, bear with me in this. Um, 
Uh, I promise my voice won't kill you. Maybe. Hopefully. So, uh, Smash World Tour announced that they were canceling their uh, tournament. Um, and this was the statement that went along with that. Uh, and all of these statements, they're basically snippets of much, much, much larger statements. And they've all been releasing statements in reaction to each other's statements and then releasing new statements based on the reaction statements. And it's been a whole thing. So, <laughs> so these are the initial statements and uh, just snippets of them. <clears throat> it is with unbelievably heavy heart that we must announce that the upcoming Smash World Tour championships, as well as the 2023 Smash World Tour must be canceled. Without any warning, we received notice the night before Thanksgiving from Nintendo that we could no longer operate. This was especially shocking given our discourse with Nintendo in the past 12 months. Since then, we've been working around the clock to take proper steps logistically, as well as prepare this statement with proper legal guidance. We are seriously grateful for all the support over the years, and we are incredibly proud of what we've been able to build as a community. In 2022 alone, we connected with over 6,400 live events worldwide, with over uh, 325,000 in-person entrants, making the Smash World Tour the largest esports tour in history for any game title. The championships would have also had the largest prize pool in Smash history at over $250,000. The 2023 Smash World Tour is planned to have had a uh, prize pool of over $350,000. That said, we are truly devastated that this is all being taken away. The impact the tour has had globally cannot be overstated. The amount of tournament organizers, competitors, and fans this will affect is hard to measure. We realize just how much we could expand our spotlight to lesser known regions, as well as Smash World Tour prize pools in 2023 and beyond establishing a much healthier ecosystem in the community and around the world. We believe this decision by Nintendo sets all of that back significantly, which is incredibly disappointing. Um, Nintendo then released a statement. In response to that statement, Nintendo would like to explain to all Super Smash Bros. fans and interested parties the background and rationale related to our decision not to grant a license to the Smash World Tour for their upcoming activities. Nintendo's decision was based solely on our assessment of the proposal submitted by Smash World Tour and our evaluation of unlicensed activities. This decision was not influenced by any external parties such as Panda Global. We'll get back to them in a minute. Any partner that we grant a license to has to meet a, the high standards we require when it comes to health and safety of our fans. Apparently not your games. It is also important that a partner adheres to brand and IP guidelines and conducts itself accordingly in a professional and organizational best practice. We use this same approach to independently assess all partners. If we discover that a partner is doing something inappropriate, we will work to correct it. When we notified the Smash World Tour that we would not license their 2022 or 2023 activities, we also let them know verbally that we were not requiring that they cancel their 2022 finals event because of the impact it would have on players. We well, just said that you told them that you wouldn't license their 2022. So, uh, thus, the decision to cancel the Smash World Tour 2022 was and still is their own choice. We are opening. We are open to partnering with or other organizations and continue to offer licenses to major tournaments outside of the Panda Cup. To receiving proposals from other groups for tournament licenses. In the meantime, Panda continues to advocate on behalf of the Smash Bros community 
and even to the point that Panda has advocated for other organizations and tournaments to work with Nintendo, such as Big House and the organizations organizers of Smash World Tour to benefit the larger Smash Bros. community. Nintendo cares about the Smash Bros. fans and its community very much, and we hope to hear back uh, their passionate feedback. We are committed to working to bring joy and fun to the community through tournaments while also ensuring that we and our partners are operating in a manner that is positive and responsible. <laughs> now, it's time to uh, keep in mind they mentioned Panda Global a couple times. Panda Global is the company that they partnered with to do officially, like, you know, official Nintendo uh, backed Super Smash Brothers tournaments. And so here's the statement from Panda Global. The team that manages and administers the Panda Cup has worked diligently to create an exciting, welcoming environment for the competitive Smash uh, throughout uh, 2022. Behind this effort, we are 40 members of the Smash community, including video editors, web developers, talent managers, sponsorship salespeople, and more who provided resources, expertise, and logistical help to 10 major events this year. As a result, the Panda Cup began and continues to be a project of passion that seeks to magnify and enhance community efforts made through competitive Smash. We were all surprised as the public to see the announcement of Smash World Tour Championships cancellations, as well as the accompanying statement, which attacked the hard work and ethics of those behind the Panda Cup. The team was not informed of any intention to cancel the World Smash World Ch Tour Championship 2022, nor has the team ever engaged in conversation that sought those ends. As Nintendo of America indicates in their own statement, the organizers of Smash World Tour were not required to cancel their 2022 championship event, and any implication that Panda Cup team had any influence in that regard is false. We are excited to see a fruitful year of competition come to an end with both December Circuit events and the Smash World Tour's decision to cancel theirs is disappointing. Panda has listened to the community and changed some of our approaches to working with tournaments based on that feedback. In the Smash World Tour statement, there are a number of accusations leveled against Dr. Allen, the CEO of Panda. In reality, Dr. Allen, as Nintendo of America has corroborated, has been one of the more vocal supporters of the broader community and the Smash World Tour organizers ugh, in internal conversations. Uh, however, the Panda Cup team does acknowledge that and regret an interaction between Dr. Allen and Beyond the Summit, in which he spoke in a manner that did not reflect either guidance from Nintendo or our own standards. Panda took efforts to rectify the situation immediately, and in the second half of the year, uh, a dedicated team made up of multiple staff members was assembled to manage Panda Cup activities and serve as the primary point of contact for event runners, removing the possibility of future miscommunication from occurring. The Panda Cup has invested thousands of hours towards making sure this cup is as strong as offering as we can provide and we look forward to continuing to build alongside the communities as we serve a promising future for smash <laughs> keep in mind that while this situation is a he said she said it should be noted that both nintendo and panda global as panda global statement has uh, referenced have a history that follows what smash world tour is saying oh my god all right Give my break of voice for a second. What do you think about all this? That was a lot of information. <laughs> it was. It honestly just sounds to me like Nintendo's still doing their sketchy things that they always do. It's good to know... Uh, go to the next story. It's good to know that they have... By... Uh, uh, 
what was it? The, they have a high threshold for, you know, uh, third parties having tournaments with their games, but apparently yeah. they don't have high uh, a high threshold for their own games performing well. Um, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, Nintendo. Look, I know that the Japanese you know, culture operates a little differently than American culture. And uh, there's fan, you know, fan projects and so forth aren't looked on as favorably uh, there as it is here and so on and so forth. I, look, I get all of that, but it's free advertising. I don't understand how they have not figured this out yet. It's literally advertising you pay no money for. People are doing it because they love your product. And you're doing all this sorts of, all these things with, you know, this, and then you have the fan games that they take down, and, you know, they, they have no, next to no music from any of their games on Spotify. But when people post their, you know, music from their games on YouTube, heaven help them. They are going to be paying out their ass for the rest of their lives. It's like people want. People want this. You don't have to. You literally don't have to do anything. I don't understand. I just I don't understand. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, this definitely sounds like it is um it probably is more nintendo than panda but i do think it's interesting that in panda statement they're like listen i know we have a history i know some things were said but we promise it's not us <laughs> um but yeah uh it's just a shitty situation, and I wish that it didn't have to happen like this all the time. You remember, uh, what was it? Was it like 2014 Evo or something like that? Where Nintendo almost got Evo cancelled? Like the biggest, just in general, fighting game tournament cancelled? Because they're like, no Smash. Can't have Smash there. I'm gonna be honest, Doug, back in 2014... I don't know if I it was, was not paying attention. I say I was not paying attention to Nintendo at all. Yeah, I, I was mean, content again, with my I was content with my PS3 at that time. I mean, again, this is Evo. This is you know Tekken and Street Fighter. Like this is the that is the big fighting game tournament, and they're like, who said you could have Smash? <laughs> Can't have Smash. Uh. But yeah. Um, speaking of Nintendo, we are aware that players may encounter issues that affect the game's performance. Talking about Scarlet and Violet's performance, our goal is always to give players a positive experience with our games. We apologize for the inconvenience. We take the feedback from our players seriously and are working on improvements to the games. That was the statement that accompanied the 1.1 1 .1, uh, update uh, patch notes. Um, and uh, keep in mind that Scarlet and Violet sold 10 million units in three days. That is the most for any console exclusive game ever. 10 million in three days. No one has ever done that in the entire history of video games, in the 40 years of video games. Uh -huh. Despite the high sales and the good reviews, the consensus is it performs very poorly. People are like, this is the most fun we've had in Pokemon, but man, it does not run well. Uh, the 1.1 update includes 
uh, ranked battles being added because, of course, you need to have a ranked system. Um, music, uh, they are going to fix music playing incorrectly in certain battles, which was basically the Elite Four and uh, the Champion, which is like the biggest fights in the game. The music was wrong. And then, quote, other select bug fixes, end quote. So how do you feel about uh, what they're saying about Scarlet and Violet? And do you think they actually fix the game? Or are they just going to do enough for the competitive Pokemon scene so they can make money on that? Um, I think they're going to do the bare minimum. Yeah, I think so too, unfortunately. Because that's uh, just what big companies do. Yeah. I, the weird thing for me is, quote, other select bug fixes. Like, normally, that's what the patch notes tell you, is all of the bug fixes. And they're like, yeah, it's just bug fixes. <laughs> um yeah it's crazy because the whole reason video games are still around is after the crash of 83 Nintendo came along 2 years later and one they did not brand their stuff as video games because of that but the other thing is they had a little gold label that they put on the corners of every box uh, of every game that came out on their platform, which was the Nintendo Quality Certification. A gold star sticker, essentially, is what it was. And it meant that no matter what, you know that this game is going to play well because Nintendo has verified that it plays well. And they had that through the SNES as well. I think they had it for like early in 64. They did eventually drop it, but even then you still had a certain quality to Nintendo games that you didn't have compared to other games. And now, now is it because of the Switch hardware? Or is it that Nintendo's getting a little full of themselves with all the success that the Switch has had? I can't say. But, man, the games are not... The games that have come out this year have had issues. I mean, going back to Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Arceus, I actually played that one. That had some of the worst graphical glitches I have seen uh, in like 3D games like it was bad speaking of Pokemon I just found a, I just found a funny Pokemon picture I'm sitting oh, yeah? in the panel nice um, you have uh, Bayonetta had its fair share of performance issues oh nice I love that <laughs> <laughs> he sends, uh, ability hyper piss yeah, like uh, uh, evolution of a coffee addict, and it's uh, and it's different Pokemon, but they're coffee cups, uh, in various forms. Um, yeah, but they uh, you have um, Kirby. Kirby hit it well. Uh, Kirby. Anything that's in the distance, uh, like far off in the distance, will kind of run, you know, run at a lower frame rate. But the way they used the art style of Kirby, it actually worked for that art style. So even though it was, there was, quote, performance issues, they hid it behind the art to make it artistic. That was really cool. Um Let's see, what was another game that came out this year that had some issues? Uh, I don't remember what all, what all else came out on Nintendo, but 
pretty much um uh pretty much the only one that ran real the two that ran really well was Kirby, but like I said, they hit it behind art. And then um Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which is admittedly a JRPG, so like it's not super uh, like I love JRPGs, but JRPGs are not pushing the limits of hardware. Um so yeah, it's just it it sucks. It sucks so much that that is an issue for them right now. Um they from what I've seen like reports and stuff I've seen, there's not going to be a, a new console or a new or anything from Nintendo till at least 2024. And I don't know that another year of the Switch is going to uh, work. Right. I'm I Zelda's my favorite franchise and I am terrified of how Tears of the Kingdom is going to work compared to what I've seen this year from other Switch games that have been first party. Let's not even forget that. These are games developed directly by Nintendo. Um or, you know, maybe not Pokemon's not actually Nintendo. Uh, but like it's you know what I'm saying. It's it's yeah. Nintendo um adjacent essentially. Uh, but I feel like I'm forgetting about something. Oh, yeah. Amnesia the Bunker. Uh, so he, this is a new Amnesia game that was just announced. Um, the description is players will walk around the course of an ill, uh, ill lighted World War I bunker in the shoes of a French stol uh, soldier, all those, all those uh, statements have me rattled reading, a soldier <laughs> troubled by his amnesia and hunted by an otherworldly creature. Unlike previous entries, this, uh, the player will have a weapon in this amnesia game. It's going to be semi-open world. Uh, and along with an, an the announcement trailer for the game, they said that it would be released next year, which would be the shortest uh, time between Amnesia games. Um, and it will be developed by Frictional Games, which developed the first Amnesia, as well as two of the other three. Nice. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah, that's what you're saying, is you love the Amnesia franchise. So, how do you feel about them adding, you know, making it open, semi-open world, and adding a weapon? Too keen on the weapon part, because, like, the big thing that I loved about Amnesia was the fact that there was no fighting back. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's just run and hide. But what... Like, which is what I like from pretty much all my favorite horror games, like mm -hmm. Amnesia. Outlast was big on that. Out um, Outlast Two wasn't good though. Outlast was pretty good, but Outlast Two was not it. Outlast Outlast Two was a bit more confusing for me, but Outlast and the Outlast Whistleblower DLC were really good. Yeah, and I'm hoping the new Outlast that's coming out is uh going to be just as good as the first one. But um. But like just that concept of you can't fight. All you can do is yeah. run. Is like my favorite thing ever. So the fact that they're adding a weapon, I'm not too keen on that. Open world, I'm all for. But mm -hmm. the weapon part, I'm like, eh. So for anyone that's not listening, Amnesia... I would say Amnesia is more so psychological horror. Obviously there's the environmental horror to it too. But there's a lot of it will fuck your psyche up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my my question to you is do you think that maybe that's why they added a weapon to this game to have like the 
the freaky moments with your gun where you're firing and there's nothing there or are you possibly hurt someone else that you're not intending oh. to because of you know reasons there's there's for me that it's thinking that they could be doing that but like there's another part of me that just feels like they might be doing it for, you know, like a get out of jail free card for people who just can't handle it. So people are having more access to it. Cause a lot of people can't handle those kinds of things, which I get. Yeah. But like, if you can't handle it, don't play it. I mean, that's, yeah. That's and honestly, if that's the case, then the problem with, you know, that would be, then it almost becomes kind of like the last half of uh, Resident Evil 7, where, yeah. like, the last half of Resident Evil 7 is basically Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it no longer is for It's just, let's shoot as much as we possibly can. Yeah. Um, so it, I, I think if they go with more like a, you know, Resident Evil 2 style, having a weapon where the weapon really does jack shit just helps you get out of yeah. situations. Honestly, yeah. It's like just like helps you a little bit. Doesn't actually fucking kill anything unless you just waste everything. Yeah. So that could be worth something to look at. But yeah. uh yeah no they uh I do think a World War One bunker is an interesting idea because we see a lot of World War Two stuff. We don't really yeah. see a lot of World War One stuff, and I yeah. almost think like having like a rotted out, rusted out bunker, and exploring that with all the psychological shit that goes on in that game that could be really cool. Yeah. I completely agree. But we will just have to see. Oh, man. Well, uh, if you liked or didn't like this podcast, make sure to do all of the things, like hit the like button and hit the subscribe button, as well as the bell on, well, on, at the Exit Plays on YouTube. I'm still getting used to that, guys. Sorry. Um <laughs> or giving it a high rating on whatever podcast service you use so you can find like-minded people. Be sure to tell people about the show. Word of mouth is the best way to help us grow. And I brought it up before, but on patreon.com slash the briefing room, you can financially support the show and get cool rewards as well. That's all from us. Take care. <laughs>